After the SSRIs, that's selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, let's move on to selective serotonin and norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors. They are called SSNRI or sometimes they are called SNRI. There are two drugs to be discussed, venlafaxine and duloxetine. These drugs are useful for refractory depression. If you already tried many drugs and if the patient is not, if the disease is not responding, you can think of SSNRIs or SNRIs, that's venlafaxine and duloxetine. They are especially useful if your patient with depression is suffering from backache, complaints like backache, muscle ache and neuropathic pains or they can be also independently used if in the patients with backache, muscle aches or neuropathic pains. They are especially useful if your patient was on long term SSRI and has now started suffering from the sexual dysfunction which is very predominant adverse effects of SSRI. So SSRI induced sexual dysfunction. The speciality of SSNRI is they are rapidly acting agents. So you don't have to wait for a long period of time to get the results. They have got rapid action and they produce minimal sexual dysfunction and that makes a great advantage in patients with depression. They have got less alpha blocking, histaminergic blocking and muscarinic blocking effects. Only care you need to take is don't stop the drugs abruptly. SSNRIs or SNRIs that's venlafaxine has got no anticholinergic or alpha blocking effect and is useful for depression as well as anxiety disorder. Duloxetine, the second drug, is useful in patients having depression with neuropathic pain. It's also useful for stress incontinence and we need to take caution regarding the use of this drug if the patient suffers from hepatic or renal failure. Next we move on to the monoamine oxidase inhibition, monoamine oxidase inhibitors. Let me remind you, monoamine oxidase, two isoforms, MAO A metabolizes mainly noradrenaline, 5 hydroxytryptamine and dopamine, is present in the intestine, in the nerve endings and in the liver. Monoamine oxidase B mainly metabolizes dopamine and is present in the brain, platelets and liver. I hope you remember selegiline, that's a monoamine oxidase B inhibitor and this was useful in the management of Parkinson. Monoamine oxidase inhibitors, firstly, to discuss the non-selective agents, we already told the names, phenylzine, tranylcypromine and isocarboxazide. They are non-selective because they inhibit both the isoforms, that's monoamine oxidase A as well as B, irreversibly and it takes 3 to 4 weeks to produce their effect. When to use them? These are not very commonly used agents. If there is intolerance to tricyclic antidepressants, if there are resistant cases, if there is atypical depression, if there are panic states which are not responding or the phobic states which are not responding and the patients having anxiety as an additional symptom and eating disorders, you can think of using non-selective MAO inhibitors. But in general, these are toxic agents. Let's have a look at their adverse effects, monoamine oxidase inhibitors. They produce hyperadrenergic or hypertensive crisis, arrhythmia, stroke and seizures due to the excess of amines, especially if the patient consumes drugs containing amines or the amine containing food. For example, I remind you of cheese. So if the patient is eating a large amount of cheese and receives monoamine oxidase inhibitor, monoamine oxidase A inhibitor, then the cheese is going to supply you a large amount of tyramine, that's an amine and this won't be broken down and this is going to raise your blood pressure. So that's called hypertensive crisis or hyperadrenergic crisis. This is a severe state and you need to use phentolamine and alpha blocking agent to treat this condition. So hypertensive crisis in presence of amines or amine containing food like cheese. Secondly, blurring of vision, dryness of mouth, retention of urine and constipation, postural hypotension and sexual dysfunction and serotonin syndrome if it's used with or after SSRIs. The problem with monoamine oxidase inhibitor is they have too many drug interactions and there are too many dietary restrictions. There are many substances which contain large amount of amines and this is why it's practically difficult to monitor the patient, give so many instructions, avoiding so many types of food substances. So that's the problem with the use of monoamine oxidase inhibitors. In addition, there are too many adverse effects with these drugs. That's why we go to the REMAS, that's the reversible and selective inhibitors of monoamine oxidase A. And it's a new drug that's moclobemide, which has short duration of action and it's quite safer than the tricyclic antidepressants 
because it doesn't have the anti-muscarinic and anti-histaminic or the cardiovascular system adverse effects like the tricyclic antidepressants. There is no cheese reaction with these drugs and they are useful for mild to moderate depression. They are useful for social phobia. Now we move on to the atypical antidepressants that's bupropion, trazodone and nafazodone. We also have alprazolam, I hope you remember the benzodiazepine and dextroamphetamine or amphetamine and mianserin and miritazapine in this group. The common uses of atypical antidepressants is again refractory depression if it's not responding to other drugs. SSRI induced sexual dysfunction as you can use SSNRI, you can also use atypical antidepressants if the patient is coming with SSRI induced sexual dysfunction and there is depression with intolerance to all the other agents, you can think of using the atypical antidepressants. There is a table which is telling you the highlight points. We are not going to go to the details of the, each of the drug. Bupropion is used in the management of smoking cessation. Alprazolam is useful in the management of depression with anxiety. Dextroamphetamine is useful in the management of attention deficit hyperactivity disorder and narcolepsy. There are three important toxic effects to be remembered. Trazodone and atypical antidepressant drugs produces priapism. Nifazodone is hepatotoxic and tianeptin, a very atypical, very different kind of agent, atypical antidepressant, enhances the 5-HT reuptake. I hope you remember this. This is a quite different mechanism. All the antidepressant drugs are supposed to inhibit the reuptake. Tianeptin enhances the 5-HT reuptake. Miritazapin is a little different agent. It's noradrenergic and specific serotonergic antidepressant. So it's called NSSA. That's noradrenergic and specific serotonergic antidepressant agent. This table is showing you so many things which will be useful for your MCQs. Let's read it. As far as 5-HT is concerned, bupropion is least potent and peroxetin is most potent and s is most selective for 5-HT reuptake. As far as norepinephrine is concerned, desipramine is most potent and mirtazapine is least potent of all the antidepressant drugs. As far as dopamine is concerned, the most selective agent to, re to inhibit the reuptake of dopamine is oxaprotiline. As far as the adverse effects are concerned, amitriptyline has got maximum anti-muscarinic effects, that's atropine-like effects, and nifazodone has got maximum antihistamine effect. Taken all the adverse effects together, that's alpha blockade, muscarinic blockade, and H1 blockade, doxepin has got maximum activity to produce all these adverse effects. And venlafaxine and SSNRI has got minimal alpha blockade, muscarinic blockade and H1 blockade. Fluoxetine is the longest acting agent of all the antidepressant drugs and nifazodone is the shortest acting agent of all the antidepressant drugs. So this is a summary and this is a sort of table which is going to help you to solve the most potent, least potent, most selective, least selective kind of multiple choice questions. And after this, we will continue with this particular chapter of psychopharmacology on the next session. Thank you very much.